Hello everyone, bonsoir, bonjour. This is Suchita Gupta, your French language instructor from Learn French by Suchita. Back with a new webinar on everything about DELF A1 examination. So we are going to understand what is DELF, what is DALF, and what are the levels of it. How do you register for it? What are the centers that conduct this examination? So every everything, absolutely everything about DELF A1 examination. So let's just start. Ali, so first we'll look at what are the contents of the webinar today? So first, we'll understand what is DELF. What is DELF and what is DALF? What is its full form? So how many levels does it has? And you are tested on what all skills. We'll understand all these things. Number two, I'll take you to when and where can you attempt this examination? When and where can you take this examination? Number three, I'll take who all are the people who can benefit from this examination. Number four, We'll understand what is the structure of this examination and you are tested on what all skills in this examination. Number five, that since there are six levels, I'll take you to this in the webinar. There are six levels of this examination. Can you skip those levels or not? Is it possible to skip the level and appear for a higher uh, examination, higher level or not? Then which book should you refer to for the sample papers for preparing for your examination? Next, what is the cost of this examination? How much you need to pay if you want to appear for this examination? Next, how to register for this examination? Online, offline, what are the methods? How do you register for this examination? Next, I'm going to give you some of my personal tips if you want to clear Delf A1 examination and they, they are the tips which come from my personal experience because I've appeared for all these examinations. So some personal tips from my end. Next, how we at Learn French by Suchita, we help you prepare for DELF A1 examination. And at the end, we are going to take up the question and answer session. So for the moment, you will not be able to switch on your video. You will not be able to, uh, you know, uh, type in the chat section. You will not be able to unmute the call. So that will keep for the end. All right. So question and answer, whatever questions you have, whatever you want to ask, you can keep it for the end. So let's just begin with the webinar and we are going to understand what is DELF. OK, now DELF, first of all, the full form DELF stands for Diplôme d'études en langue française. That means Diploma in French Language Studies. It's actually a diploma awarded by French Ministry of Education. If you want to be certified in the language, then you need to appear for your DELF examination. So it is basically a French language proficiency test, but it is not for the native French speakers. It is for non-native French speakers like us. Like me, I am non. I am a non-native French speaker. I am Indian, so uh, my uh, my mother tongue is not French. So for the people like me who are non-native French speakers, you have to appear for DELF examination. So let's say if you are appearing for any job, how will how will your employer get to know that? Uh, you know a certain language. You know that you know that language, but how will your employer get to know that you know a language? So this is an examination which is awarded by French Ministry of Education, which is stamped by Embassy of France, and it is one of the most authenticated exams. If you want to, if you want to um, appear for any job or anything like that, all right. Now, next, you are tested on four skills. There are always four aspects of a language, listening, speaking, reading, and writing, L, S, R, and W. So in the DELF examination, you are tested on all the four skills. I can consider that a lot of you, a lot of amongst you must have already appeared for your IELTS examination, I-E-L-T-S. IELTS examination, that is there for the English language. Similarly, on exactly the same basis, you have DELF, but DELF is for French. All right. Now, um, on, in IELTS also, you are tested on all the four skills, listening, speaking, reading, and writing. Similarly, in DELF also, you are tested on all the four skills. Now, it has six levels, starting from A1 being the beginner level, passing on to A2 elementary. B1, which is intermediate level, B2, which is upper intermediate, C1, which is advanced level, C2, which is ultimate expert level. So I can say A1 being the most basic level and C2 being the most expert level. So the difficulty level keeps on increasing with each level. So A1, A2, B1, B2, C1 and C2. Now, 
there are a lot of people who get confused who think that delf and dalf delf is d e l f and dalf is d a l f there are a lot of people who get confused between these two terminologies and they say that these are two different examinations i would say no it's one single examination but terminology is different for the first four levels a1 a2 b1 and b2 you say delf and for c1 and c2 you call it dalf so you say delf a1 you say dalf a2 you say delf b1 you say delf b2 and you say dalf c1 and dalf c2 so there is nothing like delf c1 you don't have that terminology you have dalf c1 and dalf c2 but it is same examination all right now you have different types of delf for the people who are above 18 years of age they appear for normal delf which is delf okay the terminology that they give is delf okay now for the teenagers from 12 to 18 years of age the examination the terminology that they have given is delf junior okay so this one i would say this is known as delf to public so it is for all public who are above 18 years of age okay now delf junior that is for the people who are who, who, who are from the age group 12 to 18 years and then then you have for the people for the children basically who are between 8 to 12 years of age for them the terminology that they have given is delf Pre, of course, the the I would say the difficulty level also keeps on uh, increasing or decreasing because a child who is eight to twelve years old, he would have comparatively simpler simpler questions. So you would have comparatively simpler questions in Delf Pre, maybe a little difficult questions in Delf Junior, and maybe a little difficult in Delf A one. That is for uh, for the people who are above eighteen years of age. That makes sense. all right so what i'll do is i'll open the chat for everyone so that in case i ask any question you can reply to it now my chat is open if you want to reply you can all right uh now is it clear everything is clear up till now keep your questions till end for the end wala vidhi what well, everything is clear let's just move on to the next Thing. When and where can you take this examination? First question is when. So this examination happens four times a year: March, June, September, and December. Always, it is fixed. March, June, September, and December. So right now we are in the month of September. The DELF is going to happen. Okay, and it is conducted by the network of Alliance Française all over the world. Now, what is Alliance Française? Alliance Française is the institute french language institute which conducts this examination you will have alliance process in all the major cities of india and even i would say all over the world you will find alliance process so like for example you have alliance process the delhi you have alliance process the pune you have it in ahmedabad you have it in hyderabad you have it in kolkata you have it in um, bhopal you have um it it in mumbai so bangalore you have it in major cities you will find alliance process so delf is such an examination which is conducted by all the alliance process majorly all the alliance process so if you want to uh, appear for any of uh, the delf examination then you need to uh, contact alliance process for that now how does it happen i'll guide you uh, for that there are six levels just now i told you delf a1 then delf a2 then Delf B one, then you have Delf B two, then you have Delf C one, and then you have Delf C two. So, uh, how does it happen in all the alliance process? It always begins from a Monday. Okay, so Monday it is going to happen Delf A one. Then Tuesday it is Delf A two. Then Wednesday it is Delf B one. Then Thursday it is Delf B two. So, over the week it happens always. Okay, and it happens on consecutive days. Okay. Ah, uh, next. who is it for who are the people who can benefit from this examination number 1 if you wish to become a french trainer like me in india or in abroad then this is the certification which is valid all over the world because alliance process is there all over the world delf examination happens all over the world so therefore this degree also holds value all over the world 
okay so number one if you want to become a french trainer like me in india or abroad abroad then you have to appear for that examination number two if you want to study a bachelor's degree in a french university in a friend let's say you're going to france for uh for studying any any of the bachelor's degree or let's say master's degree also any of these degrees and the medium of communication there by studying is french then how does your teacher get to know how how does the university get to know that you know the language for that that the minimum level of delft that they ask is delft b2 if you have appeared if you know delft b2 if you have appeared for your delft b2 and if you have passed this examination then you can take admission in any of the french university and the medium of communication in in it, it should be a french taught program basically all right Number three, if you want to work in any of the enterprise where French is spoken, as simple as that. Any any enterprise where the medium of communication is French, there this exam is going to help you out. In various other professions, it helps you out. Like for example, if you want to become an interpreter, if you want to become a translator, if you want to become a guide, or for all these professions, this this particular examination will help you out. Next, let's move. What is the structure of this examination? just now i told you there are four skills of a language there are four aspects of a language l s r and w listening speaking reading and writing so what is the terminology that they that they uh, use for that in french so reading in french is known as compréhension des écrits if you can see it on your screen reading is known as compréhension des écrits then listening is known as compréhension de l'oral then writing is known as production écrite and speaking is known as production oral what is the marks you are marked out of 25 marks in each of the aspect so when you appear for your reading test you are marked out of 25 listening marked out of 25 writing it is again for 25 marks and speaking again out of 25 marks so the total it will give you out of 100 so exam it is marked out of 100 yeah now what is the passing criteria how how will you get to know that you are passed in that examination out of 100 if you score a minimum of 50 in total then you are passed so 51 52 any score above 50 you are passed okay but there is one more criteria here in all the four aspects listening speaking reading and writing in all the four aspects out of 25 marks you should have a minimum score of 5 let's say if your total score is 60 you have scored uh, uh, 20 in reading 20 in listening 20 in writing okay and um, you have scored 4 marks in speaking so the total gives gives you 64 so you have cleared this criteria the first criteria which is minimum of 50 out of 100 but the second criteria which is you need to have a minimum score of 5 in each of the levels that is also must if you have scored less than 5 in any of these aspects then you are counted as failed okay so both the criteria more than 50 above 50 out of 100 total and in each of the aspects you should have a minimum score of 5 all right let's just move on to the next thing now i'll take you to all the four aspects individually and i'll tell you what are the type of questions you are asked let's look at the first aspect which is compréhension des écrits which is the reading part all right now what is the time duration for that the time duration that you are given is 30 minutes you are given 30 minutes you are marked out of 25 points which i just told you now what do you have you have very short passages talking about delf a1 right now so you have very short passages you need to read them and then you need to reply to certain questions now i would say few years back you had certain open ended questions also okay but now in the new format of delf examinations you do not have any open ended questions any fill in the blanks kind of a questions you no more have it you have only mcqs you only have multiple choice questions in french we call them les questions à choix multiples so you only have multiple choice questions that means the answers are already there in front of you you just need to mark the correct answer 
you do not have open ended questions in the in the new format of delf examination so as simple as that you have certain short passages you need to read them and then there are certain set of questions multiple choice questions all of them you need to tick the correct answer that's about the reading you have about four to five documents that depends from um, exam to exam so certain times you have four documents certain times you have five certain times they give you also six but you have to finish all of them in within 30 minutes let's talk about the second aspect which is comprehension de l'oral which is your listening test now here how does it happen first of all in the listening test there is a tape recorder there is a system and in that the audio plays okay you are given a set of paper in your hand and on that the questions are written okay when the audio plays it already has the pauses in it like for example first the audio will say that read the questions they'll give you 15 to 20 to 25 seconds to read the questions read the questions then uh then you have to listen to the audio once then appear attempt the questions again all the questions that you have in the listening section there are no open ended question no more you have open ended questions you just have multiple choice questions all right the audio in delf a1 is always placed played twice always so how does it happen let's say the audio played so first it will say read the questions it will give you 15 to 20 seconds to read the questions you read the questions then uh you listen to the audio once okay you can always ask for a rough sheet of paper to your examiner and you can make the notes on it which will help you answer the questions later then the audio will again say that you attempt the questions they will give you 30 to 35 seconds to attempt those questions two or three questions all of them are multiple choice then the audio will be played again so you can keep a track of the questions which you could not comprehend in the first hearing and then are uh, you uh, you are again given 35 to 40 seconds to complete those set of questions which you could not do in the first hearing this is how it takes place but here you are not given you are not provided with the earphones there are few students who are seated on a chair who are seated on their respective chairs in the room and there is a system the audio is placed uh, the audio is played on that system and i don't think there is any problem uh, listening wise there's never a problem you the audio is quite crystal clear all right you don't even need the headphones for that okay now the what is the time time uh, time given for that it happens for about 20 minutes 20 to 25 minutes and you are done with your listening test let's move on to again uh, and also uh, you are marked out of 25 points here also next the third aspect that we are going to see is production écrite production écrite which is also known as expression écrite which is your writing section now here what happens again the time limit you are given is 30 minutes you are again marked out of 25 points so there are about two to three questions in your writing section all right the first question in your writing paper is always and always about filling up a form how let's say you have you are going to the library and you want to take a subscription of the library you want to take a membership of the library so usually what do you do you fill up a form all right so there would be a format given to you you should know um, how to fill up a form so first question is about maybe you are taking a library membership maybe you are going for a dance classes you want to register there maybe uh, you are going for any yoga classes and you want to register there so any any such thing but it will always be about filling up the form then next you can have one or two questions more for writing a short mail maybe writing an invitation you are inviting your friend for a birthday party or for your marriage or for your anniversary anything um maybe your friend has invited you for your any any of the event at his or her place and you want to accept that invitation or you want to refuse that invitation then you can al also be asked for writing a postcard all these things but the word limit that they give you is 40 to 50 words very simple very short very crisp so 40 to 50 words you have to you have to complete it all right and whatever topics they give you mail writing invitation writing acceptance refusal postcard anything whatever you get it is always and always informal never formal you are never given formal things never never ever you will get in delf a1 you will never get 
formal situations. So let's move on to the fourth part, and that is projection oral. That is your speaking test. Now this happens for about five to ten minutes, I would say, and you are again awarded out of twenty-five points. Now there are three parts of this examination. Number one is entretien dirigé. Here it is. It is normally like a présentez-vous. Présentez-vous is presenting yourself. So examiner will ask certain questions about you. You are seated in front of your examiner. The examiner can ask you this particular question in two ways. Either he or she can ask you directly, present you, present yourself. So there are students who just write a short paragraph beforehand. I mean, uh, at home they mug it up and they say tak 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 tak. They just they just uh, mug it up and they say it. All right. There are certain examiners. who will not ask you to say a paragraph on presenting yourself they'll ask you certain specific questions about you let's say what is your name how old are you are you bachelor or are you married uh what else describe me your house who all are there in your uh, family uh what do you like to do what are your hobbies so certain questions about you so it's not directly presenting you but the the examiner is asking about you but uh it's not exactly a direct question they they are going to ask you question and answer question and answer so that's the first part next part is échange d'information now here on a piece of paper there are certain words written like for example i'm telling you in english of course the words will be written in french let's say the word is written as age the word is written as nationality children hobbies any any words written on a page there are a lot of words written okay and examiner is going to point out an any word and you need to frame a question out of that okay let's say age you can frame as as simple question as it can be let's say you can say what is your age of course in french i'm i'm giving you the example in english let's say the the word is nationality you can say what is your nationality children you can say do you have children so you have to frame the questions out of it the examiner is going to point out the word and you have to you have to frame question out of it number 3 is je the role je the role is a role play now it's actually a dialogue okay how does it happen you actually go to the french library uh, or any space which they have reserved it for you you go there in a box there are certain chits chits uh, kept in the box the uh, the person who is there in the library he or she asks you that take out two chits from the box you take out two chits and on those two, two chits there are certain situations written that you know let's say uh, you go to a bakery and you have to uh, buy certain things there that's the situation and it's always written that the examiner is going to play the role of this there will be two situation you need to whatever you are comfortable with you need to select one situation and hand over the whatever situation you have not chosen you have to hand over it to the person who is handling okay so you have now one chit in front of you you will have a bouillon bouillon is a rough sheet of paper they'll give you 10 minutes preparation time on that sheet of paper do not you you have to basically write jot down the ideas as to what you are going to uh, say during the role play i would say do not write the whole lines write just the ideas that what are you going to say because you know even if you write the whole lines it's not going to help you out because you can control your dialogues but you cannot control the your examiner's dialogue you do not know what he or she is going to say while having a conversation so it's always better to jot down certain ideas what are you going to say i would say for entretien dirigé for the first part and for the second part where you need to ask the questions for this there are, there are no um there is no preparation time given so it's on the spot but for the uh, for the je de role you are given the 10 uh, minutes preparation time when this preparation time is over you are allotted a room you go to the room in that room you will always find two examiners okay one examiner will be conversing with you and another examiner i would say who is more dangerous is going to note down all your mistakes that person will always be observer the second one he is going to always note he or she is going to note down the things what you are saying what is good what is bad what are the mistakes you have done what are the good things you have said all right so uh you get, first of all you enter the room you sit down 
you you greet the person you um you you have the first first part of the the speaking task and that is the examiner will ask you certain questions about you number 2 you pass on to uh, the sheet wherein all the words are written the examiner will point out and you need to frame the questions out of it so both these are on the spot no preparation time given for this but for sure sure the rule the examiner will always ask you what is your situation what what situation have you chosen you you tell the, that this is my situation and since you have already prepared for that you directly begin with your dialogue so that's about it is i mean i i would say are all the four aspects clear to you just let me know in the chat section yes or no or if you have any questions you can keep it for the end i'll take up all the questions for the end i would like to know for from the people is it clear all the four aspects so far so good we yes we okay cool so let's move on to the next part i'm so sorry uh yeah can you skip the levels very very important question and very very frequently asked question to me that there are six levels just now i told you delf a1 delf a2 delf b1 delf b2 then you have delf c1 and then you have delf c2 can i appear directly for my delf a2 without appearing for my delf a1 or can i appear i will appear for my delf a1 i do not want to appear for my delf a2 i want to appear directly for my delf b1 can i do that the answer is yes you can do that you can appear for any of the delf if you want to even appear for your delf delf c2 directly you can do that all right but there are pros and cons okay number 1 it is a little risky in what sense let's say you are right now at a1 level but you think that you can appear for your a2 level okay but your level actual level is a1 you directly give your delf a2 it might be possible that you don't clear it and you get disheartened you you feel a little under confident you start feeling a little under confident so it, it is a little risky so until and unless you are very sure about it that you can appear for your delf a2 or delf b1 directly uh i would say do not appear for higher uh, higher level directly okay but if you are confident enough you can again there are certain advantages to it number 1 it will save your money okay number 2 always the higher level is counted let's say you have appeared for your a2 directly delf a2 directly nobody no employer is going to ask you that have you appeared for your delf a1 no you are always counted on your higher degree delf a2 or delf b1 if you say that i have cleared my delf b2 i would not even ask you that have you done your a1 a2 b1 no for me it is as as a good adit as it can be that you have cleared your delf b2 so always the higher degree is counted all right next you can take the uh, take the exam as many times as necessary if you uh, let's say you have taken your delf uh, a1 you have not cleared it you can take it as many times 10 times 20 times 30 times as many times as you want as necessary but again there is a but here you cannot repeat the same qualification if you have already cleared the exam okay let's say what is the passing criteria passing criteria is let's say you have got 51 marks you have passed but if you want to improve the score in the same level that you cannot if you have cleared the examination then you cannot repeat the same qualification again it has happened with me when i appeared for my delf b2 examination i had uh, done my three parts but when it came to the fourth part i had this feeling that i did not do very good in my third part in my third aspect of the language which was i think it was writing i felt that i did not do very good in my writing part so the fourth exam fourth aspect when when it came to that i purposely failed it because i knew that if i'm going to pass it passing criteria is five marks so i did not even appear for it okay uh because i knew that if i if i if i'm going to clear it then there is no chance that i can improve my score okay so that's about it next which book to refer again a very frequently asked question so for that i would say this is the best book it's actually the bible if you want to uh if you want to appear for your delf a1 examination and the book's name is reussir le delf 
where you see Liddell. You have it for all the levels, huh? Where you see Liddell, ah, uh, you have it where you see Liddell, ah, the Bea, Bedo. You have it for all the levels, even for C one and C two. You have it, and it is very, very easily available on Amazon and very cheap. It's I think three fifty bucks, not more than that. With that, you also get the CD for practice the listening task. So basically, uh, this book has all the sample papers for. Which will help you prepare for your DELF paper. So a very good book. Uh, you can just blindly follow this book. For there are multiple, multiple books available in the market. But I always say, if you have done this book, you you are ready for your examination. Okay. Next cost. What is the cost of this examination? Let me see. There is someone who's asking the question. Um, yeah, I will just mention the name here. Where you see the DELF. Uh -uh. That's the name. This is for A1. You can have it for A2, B1, B2 for all the levels. Next, what is the cost of this examination? So I would say the cost of this examination depends upon the center also in which you are appearing. But this is the approximate cost that I've written over here. External candidates and internal candidates. What does that mean? For, so for the students who are already studying in Alliance Française, they have to pay. Comparatively, a lesser amount because you are already paying them for uh, learning the language. Okay, for the external candidates, let's say you are uh, studying somewhere else. Let's say you are studying at Learn French by Suchita. So you are considered as an external candidate for Alliance Francaise. So what is the approximate amount that they that they uh, that they demand for DELF A one? I am saying that is approximately nine thousand to ten thousand. Um, when I would say when I appeared for the for this examination. Ten years ago, even more than ten years ago, then uh, the cost was somewhere five thousand, five thousand to six thousand. Over the over over this time, the cost has increased; it has doubled. Now, for the internal candidates, the students who are the the students who are already the part of Alliance Process, who are studying in Alliance Process, the amount that they have to pay is about fifty five hundred to sixty five hundred. That depends upon the center you are appearing in. Mostly, I would say in metropolitan cities like in Delhi, you will find little higher amount. Let's say ten thousand approximately, and if you if you are appearing in Pune or let's say Bhopal or a, a little comparatively smaller cities, then um, I would say the, the the cost is a little less. Let's say nine thousand on eighty five hundred, so the amount is between this. So it, it depends upon the center you are appearing in, and num and 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 number two is the fees. It increases with each level. So for Delf A one and A two, the fees are same. For Delf B one and B two. The fees is same, and DALF C1 and C2 the fees is same mostly. So it keeps on increasing with uh, with the levels. Okay. Next, how to register for this examination? As simple as that. You need to contact the front desk of the nearest Allianz process. So if you are staying in Delhi, you have to contact the front desk of Allianz process, the Delhi. Just Google their number. Allianz Process the Delhi contact number. If you're staying in Mumbai, just contact them. If you're staying in Pune, Ahmedabad, Hyderabad, Chennai, whatever center you want to appear in, just contact their front desk. Ask them what is the what are the dates? Uh, what are the next dates for DELF examination? Although each of the center has their own website also, like Allianz Process the Delhi has its own website. Allianz Process the Pune has its own separate website. So on the website also, they have very beautifully explained what are the next dates, what is the cost, how do you have to register for that? Okay. Now registration takes place online, offline, both. If you want to appear, if you want to register online, you can do that. Uh, you have to just pay, and then there are certain um, identity proofs that they ask you. Let's say some passport size photographs. Then they will ask you the photocopies, Xerox copies of your Aadhaar card or passport or any any such documents. You need to upload them, and you need to pay the fees. Ah, uh, but one thing which is very important, it is on first come first serve basis. They have limited seats. So generally for A1 and A2, they have a little little more seats because a lot of people appear for DELF A1 and A2 because they are basic levels. So um. I would say, uh, if you want, if you want to appear for your Delhi A one A two, then about Delhi one, I know that they offer about two hundred to three hundred seats that they have, but it is on first come first serve basis. And if you want to uh, register offline, you can go to the uh, to the center, and you can ask the front desk. You can fill up the form there, submit the fees, and that is how it goes for the offline registration process. Okay.
let's move on to my personal tips all right first very 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 important master the counting french counting is very easy to understand but i would say when they actually speak let's say they say kafama jiznaf so your mind takes a little a little while to figure out that kafama jiznaf is 99 so you have to master the counting that as soon as the person says sankan set or as soon as the person says sweson jiznaf you are not confused that sweson jiznaf is 79 and sweson nerf is 69 it should not confuse you why is it important because in the listening section in compliance of the lohal you have a major section a major chunk of question which is based on numbers let's say they will ask you what time is it it is based on numbers uh, maybe they'll tell you the phone number you have to listen to that phone number and note it down so in the phone number there are uh, it is said in the groups of two so you have five groups to be identified if you identify if you do not identify even a single digit then you are not you are, you are awarded zero okay so what i mean to say is it usually happens that by the time your mind identifies that what is 99 and what is 69 the audio runs away so before this master the counting for delf a1 it's very 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 important for time for phone number they can ask you certain questions about the age let's say what is the age of this person who is speaking in the in the in the audio um then what is the price of 1 kg of tomatoes maybe anything whatever so all these questions are based on counting on numbers you sh- you should master the numbers number 2 understand the global theme in the listening section at delf a1 level we do not expect you to understand each and every word in the listening section in the audio that you are going to hear so what do you have to do you have a rough sheet of paper in your hand whatever audio you are hearing just note down just jot down the principal words you are able to understand just note down the words and then you you will you will just make a story out of those words to understand the global theme of listening section that will help you out in solving the questions later okay so even if um, even if uh, you you understand the global theme of the listening section you are you 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 are good enough to answer the questions number 3 know your formats well just now i told you that in the writing section you will have postcard writing you will have invitation writing you have email writing all these things you have so you should know the format of writing just like we started in english that how do you write a postcard what is the format what is the format of writing an invitation there are some very good questions in this book you can practice from this book and it also tells you uh, the format the formats are listed so you should know the formats Number four, get acquainted with a few French names: Antoine, Cécile, Sophie, Guillaume, Thomas, Jacques, Christophe. All these are French names. So sometimes I have I have seen in my classes also when I play the audio, students are not able to recognize if it's a name or if it's a word in French, which means anything. So I would say get acquainted with a few French names. which are often repeated these are few of them you can google search more okay next master the conjugation of the verbs in the present tense there are so many tenses in french 10 to 12 to 14 tenses in french but at delf a1 level we expect you to master the conjugation of the verbs in the present tense so of the basic verbs like let's say être avoir boire lire dire uh écrire décrire répondre vendre all these are you should know the conjugation of all the three groups in french at least in the present tense if you can master even passé composé nothing better than that all right next expand your vocabulary in the listening task also in the speaking task also and even in the reading task you have certain questions which are based on certain listed themes let's say activities or weather or daily routine they will ask you that uh, describe me your daily routine what do you do in uh, what do you do in the morning okay you should know certain basic vocabulary about food house clothes all these things you should at this level i'm not expecting you to be i mean the examiners do not expect you to write the whole sentences or write the complex sentences but they will always expect you to have a good baggage of vocabulary basic vocabulary 
okay uh, for this i would say on my youtube channel there is a playlist specially for the vocabulary you can go and you can you can just refer to that okay mostly you will find it on all the themes next there is a frequently asked question on itinerary okay there is a map given and in the um, in the audio that you are going to hear they'll give you the directions and sometimes you have itinerary questions even in the reading one okay they give you the directions so you should know the prepositions which are which are used to uh, give you the directions let's say a droite a gauche près de so what am i saying i'm saying uh, to the left to the right go straight uh, turn left or uh, near far all these are uh, the the prepositions that you use for guiding someone as to how does the person has to go so you should be able to guide the person and you should be able to understand if the person is guiding you okay uh for this i would say you can change your phone language to french okay when you go somewhere uh you switch on the gps just change the language settings to french and the gps is going to guide you so when it says a droite a gauche your these things they they get fit into your mind and you know how do you understand the directions in french so this is just a tip from my end that you can change your phone language to french next first question in the writing section is always about filling up a form just now i told you that let's say you're going to a library you want to take the subscription of it you want to um, you want to you want to you know register yourself you want to take admission in the dance classes which is happening or maybe any yoga classes happening or any french classes happening anything you have to fill up a form the first section so you should know how do you write no prénom adresse code postal uh, that numero de telephone there are certain rules as to how do you write no how do you write prénom so there i have seen such copies wherein uh, students are confused between no and prénom so prénom is the first name no is the last name so my if i ask you if i if i tell about me my name is suchita gupta so my prenom is suchita and my no is gupta and then there are certain rules to it you write your uh, surname your no your family name always in the capital letters how do you write a address in french how do you write the telephone number in french how do you write the email address in french so there are certain rules to it so you should know about it which are very well described in this book again next know how to answer some basic daily life questions or personal questions about you the first task in your speaking speaking test what is it about the examiner is going to ask you certain questions about you so you should be able to answer very basic questions about you daily life situations what do you do in the morning um what are your hobbies what do you like to do what do you do on the weekends uh, tell me about your family um uh, or let's say describe me your house or describe me your pet do you have a pet or not all these some basic real life situations you should know how do you answer master how to ask questions so number 2 i told you this number se second task of your speaking test is there are, there is a sheet of paper on which there are certain words written so on those uh, uh the examiner is going to point out the word and you need to frame the question out of it so you need to master how do you ask questions okay you should absolutely know what are the rules to make you sh you should know the topic interrogation very very thoroughly to make questions next practice certain role plays okay usually uh, the topics that you get in your delf a1 are between a buyer and a client you go to a bakery you want to buy breads and all you go to uh, maybe a stationery shop you want to buy something usually it is you go to a you go to a shopping mall and you want to buy some clothes okay so there are real life situations always and it is usually between a buyer and a client so these are there are certain situations which are mentioned in this book so you can you like as a student i used to stand in front of a mirror and i used to uh, practice certain jeu de rôle it really helped me out okay next how we at learn french by suchita help you prepare for your delf a1 all right so for this i would say just give me one minute um so i would say that i provide live classes only to the people who are preparing for their tef canada examination tef canada examination for canadian immigration but what about for the people who are preparing for delf for that on my website i'll just 
that is going to share yeah so on my website which is learn french by suchita.com on this you will find this course which is french language beginners delf a1 course if you click on this you have i would say it it required a lot of efforts to uh, to to um to fabricate this course and there are two types of videos in this course number one the videos on in which i'm teaching on the whiteboard just like i do on my youtube channel so all these videos all this course content which you are seeing over here all these videos are whiteboard videos okay and sometimes i've already uh, i have also explained you in hindi also there are people who um, who understand better when i write the the pronunciation and all in hindi so most in most of the videos you will find that also okay uh then next is second type all these are board videos yeah number 2 is this which are live recorded videos so these are actually the recorded sessions of my live classes of my live zoom classes okay which wherein i am actually practicing uh, the listening task uh, the speaking task all these things i'm practicing with you so these are the recorded sessions of my live classes so these are two kind of videos that you get once you are done with the board videos whiteboard videos whiteboard videos then it becomes very easy for you to understand what i'm teaching in the live classes okay then you also get uh, downloadable ebooks the ebooks the videos you cannot download but all the ebooks the past years uh, delf sample papers like i was talking about this book reusi le delf uh, uh, you also get the pdf of this book along with the um, along with all the audio files okay so all the audio files ebooks sample papers all these things you can download but the videos you cannot download okay and the validity of this course is one year so usually i say that if you do the course religiously then um it takes you about 4 to 5 months not more than that but keeping it at a safer side you can uh, you, you know access the videos for complete one year and during this one year you can watch the recordings for any number of times there is no limitation on number of times that you can watch the videos okay then uh see you have certain task for listening activities also then there are certain videos wherein i am taking you to france i mean uh, travel videos where you will get to know the cultural aspect of the language okay so that's about uh, this course uh just give me one moment there are also people who uh, ask me that what is the difference between your youtube videos and this course number 1 on youtube the course that you see is is that's not a complete course that's those are the videos we upload only for promotional purposes okay and uh, number 2 that is not even a structured course the videos are very random how will you get to know that what is the order of the videos that you need to watch okay so for that you will always need a structured course to be a part of so that's about uh, my course okay so what all do we offer in this course two types of videos whiteboard and live class recordings which i just showed you downloadable ebooks downloadable audio files downloadable pdfs and downloadable sample papers all these things you can download and yes very important for the people who want to clear their doubt sessions how about those uh, people usually ask me that how about doubt clearing here so there is a discussion tab on the website you can mention your doubts over there and they are replied directly by me okay so for the doubt clearing session this is the thing i would like to thank each one of you for being there in the webinar today for listening to me for all those who have not been able to make up for the webinar today i'm going to upload the recording in maybe one hour and uh, you can watch the recording on the youtube channel and you can always share it comment like it for these things so thank you so much for being there allez au revoir ciao bisous bisous et passez une bonne soirée bonne nuit